the fray and I now want to have a conversation around that. Joining me in studio is my colleague Dr. Masi Korir. She is a doctor but she's also a reporter here at uh, KTN News. Thank you so much Masi for joining us. Now you know the biggest question is why did the government wait for so long? I mean they knew that this strike was going to happen but why did they wait for you know about, about a month or a month, a month or two months? I think that's a question that would be best answered by the government mm -hmm. because you know we're having uh, different voices from the government. Yes. The doctors' union, the nurses' union have a different voice because they say they have been approaching the government to have meetings to resolve this mm -hmm. uh, crisis that yes. is there to address their issues. But the government has been meeting, but these meetings have not yielded anything. Mm -hmm. So according to the striking clinicians, uh, this was the last resort because they say they have exhausted all other avenues. So I think that's a question that the government would answer best as to why until the last minute. And how dire is the situation? Because, I mean, we're talking about these deals and, you know, this CBA that of, of 2013. But when you look at the people who are really affected, I mean, families are losing their loved ones. How dire the city is the situation in their health facilities right now? Okay, before we get to how dire the situation is, mm -hmm. right now as of today, which is day three of the doctors and nurses strike mm -hmm. and day one, of the clin clinical officer strike. Yes. So we are actually having three different strikes called by three different unions mm -hmm. for three different groups of memberships. And each of these cadres, uh, the doctors, the nurses, and the clinical officers, each play a different role mm. in, in healthcare. So now when all of them are out of the facilities, then the situation on the ground is that there is no one to offer clinical services, there's no one to offer medical services. So it's up to both parties, both government and the striking yes. healthcare workers yes. to resolve these as soon as possible because at the end of the day, it's you and I, Betty, who will go to a facility. It's our kin who will go to a facility mm -hmm. and not be able to access any services whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So it's up to both parties to actually look at it as a major crisis, as an emergency, and sort it out with the, with the immediate possible solution that would be amicable to all mm -hmm. all the parties and like you mentioned the clinical officers today now have joined the strike I mean you'd imagine that you know the last two days at least they have been assisting in one or two things in the hospital mm -hmm. so you know looking at this situation where now they're not there you know what impact does it have obviously as I said when the clinical officers are not there when the nurses are not there mm -hmm. when the medics are not there then there's no so it's complete are, paralysis so, at this point. Yes, it's complete paralysis. Mm -hmm. But since their strike was called on today from midnight, we're expecting that there should be a bit of skeleton stuff yes. here and there yes. that will be handling some bit of emergencies. And I know there are several counties that had contingency measures where they're either referring to uh, their patients to the nearest faith-based organization okay. or private facilities mm -hmm. to take care of those really critical and dire cases. There are other facilities like Nakuru the other day were telling us they have their ICU still operational so they can still offer critical care. But now with this new development mm -hmm. today, uh, we have to really monitor and see are there any services in public facilities All right. and in the private facilities, what is the effect? All right. Are they experiencing more people mm -hmm. or what is happening in the private facilities? So let's now go back to Afia House and the talks that have been you know, failing almost every single day right from Sunday before the strike. What is the health uh, ministry officials, what are they doing wrong? Um, but I, I, I don't know if anyone is doing anything wrong or anything right because uh, the doctors have their own resolve. They want their CBA. The nurses want their recognition agreement and their CBA signed. Mm -hmm. And now the clinical officers, are, according to the, their strike notice or the letter that they had, mm -hmm. they were citing uh, that the exercise carried out by SRC mm -hmm. was not inclusive. They, actually, in their own terms, they are calling it offensive uh, job evaluation exercise okay. and so they want to be included and they want obviously harmonization and uh, harmonization of their pay grade and of their salaries so all of them have their demands and now the ministry or the government has to compromise or the doctors and the nurses and the clinical officers has to compromise but why is it always getting to a deadlock what is that thing that they're not agreeing on um betty everything always boils down to money yeah uh, can the government afford to pay 
the clinicians now I'll say the clinicians now because we have all of them, all of them. the doctors the yes. nurses and the clinical mm -hmm. officers can the government afford to pay that's why uh, the CS was telling us it's it's now all inclusive from all government uh, mm -hmm. government bodies from mm -hmm. the ministry to the salaries and remuneration commission to the public service commission to the Ministry of Labor, it's all inclusive, and also the Treasury. Remember the, pre the first meeting that they had on Sunday, the Treasury was represented mm, mm, because mm. the government has to look and uh, see if they have money. But now, unfortunately, as of now, we don't have any word of uh, if there's been any offer on the table mm. so that the other party has rejected it or not. So we are still monitoring okay. to see. But as of now, the talks have been, how do we resolve this? All right. Yeah. Masi, you are a doctor, first of all. So, I mean, even your interests are represented, you know, in this strike. But also you've been following this story for some time now. Looking at, you know, the sentiments that the doctors have, do you think that if the government comes and says, we do not have this money right now, because they said they're not going back to work until money is in in the bank. Do you think that it's something that they're willing to be patient about and wait for a little bit so that it's, you know, this um, CBA is implemented, you know, within a certain period of time? Are they willing uh, to negotiate amicably? Mm -hmm. Um, I'll take you back to 2011. Mm -hmm. That was when the first uh, strike under the doctors' union happened. And mm -hmm. uh, I just newly graduated. And my colleagues prior to that were taking home, um, I think, about 40 to 60,000 right. uh, before that uh, first strike. And with the strike now, we were the first beneficiaries mm -hmm. of the new... Uh, of the improved or the increased allowances then. So now it's been five years. There have been five other groups of doctors that have graduated. Right. And the economy changes, the uh, cost of living changes, and everything changes. Uh, the population is increasing, the workload is increasing, the demands are getting uh, increasing, and the toll on the doctor is increasing. So whether the doctors are willing to compromise mm -hmm. and go home without their CBA being implemented might, might be a tricky one to to comment on right now, but okay. I know the doctor's resolve this time around is, is absolute. The other one, the CBA, because it's something that has been there from, the tw from mm. 2013. Mm -hmm. At least for the nurses, on the other hand, uh, their CBA needs to be uh, signed, yes, signed and registered. Yes. So there's, I, I'm not so sure, I would not talk on behalf of the nurses, but I, I would think that is something that the government should agree upon, okay. to do the recognition agreement, to sign their CBA, and then work out on, a, on an implementation right. process. Pro okay. process. All right. Thank you yes. so much, Dr. Masi Kori. She is uh, one of us here at KTN, but she's also a doctor. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You, All right. So we want to take a break, but uh, let's just have, re re have a recap of our top story this morning. And patients seeking services at public health facilities will continue to suffer today as a nationwide health workers strike enters its uh, third day today. Now, despite the health CS, Dr. Cleopa Mailu reporting progress in the talks last evening, a solution is yet to be found as Dr. Doctors dig in. Doctors unions maintain they will not call off the strike unless the government commits to implementing terms of their collective bargaining agreement of 2013. The problem is said to be compounded further today with clinical officers also downing their tools. At least 14 patients are reported to have died in the first two days of the strike. So this is a story that we're keeping an eye on here at KTN News. Remember, our colleague uh, Caroline B is currently at Afia House and we're expecting that uh, the meetings will be continuing today and hope Hopefully there's going to be uh, a solution at the end of the day today so that Kenyans, um, you know, stop suffering, you know, with this health crisis here in the country. So we wanted to take a break. Uh, remember that we also have that conversation coming um, on Friday. The world's marking anti-corruption day and so we'll be talking about this day and uh, where Kenya is at in the fight against this mo monster uh, called graft. We'll be speaking to uh, the deputy CEO Michael Mubeh who is here with me in studio. So let's take